Sometimes TV ads make me want something I wasn't even thinking about. Have you ever had that happen to you? So this ad comes on for this vehicle, the, the new Jeep Grand Wagoneer. I've never, I didn't even know there was a Grand Wagoneer. But as they were describing it, it has air-conditioned seats, a heated steering wheel, 12-inch touchscreen display, genuine wood accents. And I, I, I saw this commercial, and I just turned over to my wife, Shelly, and I just go, I want that. <laughs> I never even knew I wanted it, but now I did, because that seems awesome. It, it costs uh, enough that like you could put someone through college for four years, it, like it costs ninety-one thousand dollars or something like that. So I'm not gonna have one, but I I suddenly wanted it. And then there was an ad that started playing on TV right before Christmas that looked so good. Let's show that. Let's show that ad. Oh my goodness! I I looked at this ad and right there that bite I go. Honey, I want that. <laughs> now, during the fast, I, I want that all the time. In fact, all food seems tempting to me. We had our youngest granddaughters over to our house on Friday, Camilla and Kaya. And after everyone was gone, I was cleaning up Kaya's high chair. And suddenly, I looked down, and there I saw it. She had two of those tasteless little toddler puffs on the tray. Shelly was not in the room. There was no one looking. And for a moment, I wanted those. I don't care if there's slobber on them. I don't care what's on it. That looked good right then. You know what I'm saying? Last week, I talked about my goal for the week, and I did make it. Seven days. Wow. Wow. And I look back on it, I just say, with the Lord's help, I made it, for sure. But today, I want to talk to you about craving God's presence. Craving God's presence. I talked about all that other stuff we don't need to be craving, but we want to crave God's presence. Our key verse is Psalm 91, verses 1 to 2. Such a good verse. It says, those who live in the shelter the covering, the hiding place of the Most High will find rest, stability, peace from striving, running to and fro, will find a rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust Him. Is that your declaration today? Is that your declaration that when you hide in the secret place of God, when you hide in God, he is your strength, your safety, your provision, everything that you need. That is God. That's who he is. Well, last week was the first week of our series. It was the first Sunday of 21 days of prayer and fasting. And, and we talked about how intimacy with someone takes time. Remember a little FaceTime call I did last week? Intimacy with someone takes time. And this is, even if you are a person who gives time to relationships, here's something that some people, depending on your personality type, overlook. It takes asking and listening to feel close to that person. I cannot tell you how many conversations, many, many, many conversations I have had where the person talked for 15 minutes straight never asked me a question, and then said, good talk. And I always think, well, that was a good listen for me. But I went away from there feeling they don't know me. How many times does Jesus go away from our conversations, we call them prayer, and he, and he goes, wow, I feel like they don't know me. Wow, so sometimes we just need to stop talking and just say, Jesus, how are you doing today? What's on your heart? What bothers you? What excites you? What are you joyful about today? What, what are you thinking about my life today? And when you ask, you begin to hear. But it does take asking and listening, period. When we focus in, the, in these 21 days of prayer and fasting, we, we don't want to focus on prayer or fasting. We want to focus on Jesus. 
and prayer and fasting get you there. They get you to the secret place of God. And then finally, we trust in God's character. So we pray, we, we obey, we do everything that he's asked us to do, and we, we say, Lord, I'm asking for this healing, I'm asking for this provision, this wisdom. We do that, and then we say, and God, I trust you. Your character is good. You are holy. You are completely holy. You are love. The scripture says, God is love. So we trust him then to make the best, most loving decisions for us, right? And that's why I can say, so then leave it in his hands. Don't like give up. Don't be resigned. Oh, I'm probably not going to get anything. I pray. It's not that. It's more like, God, I've, I've let you know my heart. I know your heart is to bless. Your heart is to love. And, and there are some blessings I'm not ready for yet. So I just trust you. I trust your character. Amen. And I feel like that's a really good, healthy way to pray. You have got to pray because the Bible says no prayer, no results. So you've got to pray, but you leave those results in God's hands. You trust him with it. So today I'm talking about cravings, all right? And one of the biggest cravers in the Bible is David. David wrote a big chunk of the Psalms. And he was the second king of Israel, so a long, long ago, but he is someone called the anointed one of God. He is the great, 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 great daddy, granddaddy of Jesus. He came, Jesus came from David's line. David was a man after God's own heart. That's what God said. David, you're a man after my, God, my, my own heart, God said. And let's just listen to a couple of the ways that David expressed his craving for the presence of God. In Psalm 27, he wrote, in verse 4, the one thing. Somebody say the one thing. The one thing. Like that. Now, this is a king. Wow. Okay, the one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I need most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. So David, the person who seems like he doesn't need a thing, says, well, I do need this. I need God. I need time in the Lord's presence. Now, I, I, have, I don't think I've ever looked in the, the Passion Translation. Uh, it's just a, a, another uh, translation uh, of the Bible. Um, and it almost seems a little paraphrasy in some ways to me. But I just love the, the way this verse was stated. Here's the thing I crave from God. This is, this is David saying, here's the thing I crave from God. The one thing I seek above all else. I want the privilege of living with him in his house, every moment in his house, finding the sweet loveliness of his face, filled with awe, delighting in his glory and grace. Listen to this. I want to live my life so close to him that he takes pleasure in my every prayer. Wow. Oh my goodness. I don't know if your experience so far in 21 days of prayer and fasting is like this, but I today want to stir up your craving for God, for his presence, that you would be able to say like David, I just want you more than anything else. And I want to delight in who you are, in how you are. And I want to be so close to you that you love my prayers. That you go, oh, yeah, good job. I would have prayed about that, too, if I read that. Yeah. That, and, in fact, I just want to give you that. Like, that's the, that's the experience, the craving that David has for the Lord. There's another psalm, Psalm 63, and I'm going to come back to these two psalms, 27 and 63, in this message. Psalm 63, verse 1, David writes, Oh, God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. Wow, David is just getting with it. He's like, Lord, I am just crying out for you. I desire your presence more than anything else. I, I feel like I, how I would feel if I was just wasting away, and some of us are getting an experience of that during the 21 days of prayer and fasting, like that feeling of uh, uh, like my stomach has just been rumbling, rumbling, rumbling. It's saying, I want, I want, I want. That's what David is saying. That's how I feel about you. I feel like that's severe. I just want want you, God. I'm starving and thirsting for your presence. 
And we know Jesus said in the, in the New Testament, Jesus said those who hunger and thirst for right living, for righteousness, will be filled. Like there's something about your hunger that God responds to. He's like, oh, wow, you want me? I want you too. Here I am. Let me fill you. David had such an intense craving for God. So would, uh, would, would you just take a second and just evaluate your craving? One to ten. One is, I don't care. Ten, intense. I've got to have God. I'm desperate for God's presence. This isn't for you to say out loud, but just, just take a quick second and evaluate. How's your craving? How's your desire for God's presence? Okay, so today I'm hoping I can stir you up above that. Where, wherever that is, wherever you are. A craving is an intense desire for something particular, like a certain food. Now, hunger is a little different than a craving. Hunger is your body saying, I have need of nourishment. So it's a, just a very natural body response if you, if you haven't, had, uh, haven't had food for a while. Craving, on the other hand, may or may not have anything to do with hunger. It may it is, you know, like when, you're, when you are physically hungry, you might crave a certain thing. But craving, actually even physical craving, can be triggered by a lot of different things besides physical lack of nu- nourishment. Boredom sometimes triggers a craving. I'm bored. I need some Pringles or, or whatever it is. Does anyone ever crave Pringles? I don't know. Okay, some greasy Ruffles Ridges. Yes, with onion dip. That's what I'm craving. But uh, stress can trigger craving. Did you know that lack of sleep can trigger cravings for junk food? A TV ad, I've already shown that, can trigger craving. But also, those are, seem sort of like negative things, but also positive things can trigger craving, like, uh, like uh, positive social situations. And you're just like, you're in a, in a setting, and so you just uh, feel like some sweets, salty or fatty foods, <laughs> those cravings. Cravings come from those different, um, for, for lots of different reasons, for good reasons, for bad reasons. And the deal is that cravings come from the reward center in the brain, not the hunger system of your body. Cravings come from a different place. Even though a lot of times you're craving food, what you really are craving is a reward. It's not that your body, like you ate 20 minutes ago, you ate a meal. Like That's not why, why it's craving something. It's, it is looking for pleasure. And we've trained our brains. I, I learned a new word this week, hyperpalatable. You've, we've trained our brains for hyperpalatable foods, sugars, salties, and fatties. Those are hyperpalatable. Mm. We've trained our brains, though, to think that's where pleasure is. And so then when we're wanting pleasure, we, we, we think about those things. Lack of sleep can cause you to, to um, crave unhealthy foods, and, and possibly just because your decision-making is impaired, uh, you know, if, you know, if you're sleep-deprived. And getting plenty of sleep naturally leads, they've found, to craving healthier foods. It was interesting to me, uh, actually, uh, uh, b- before the fast, I started a 30-day apprenticeship with Jesus. Just going through a book, devotionals, exercises, and stuff. And step one, I was very surprised and very convicted, get eight hours of sleep every night for 30 days. That was the challenge. Because your desires will change. That's kind of interesting and you'll begin to want God in a different way. And so I hope I can stir you up a little bit, stir up your craving for God. I hope that this message will be a trigger for you and make you go, man, I just want more of God's presence. Why did David crave the presence of the Lord so much? Why did he always long to be in the secret place of God? What could make you crave God more than things like social media or other things you reach for? What could make you crave? What could stir up your craving for the Lord's presence? Well, in the Psalms that I started, I'm going to go on a little bit further in those Psalms now. now, David mentions 
some rewards that he has found, some amazing rewards of being in the Lord's presence, things that were just that God brought to him as a result of being in God's presence. And so David had experienced those things from the Lord, and so now his reward center was activated, and he was like, I want more of that. I've been with the Lord before in his presence, steeped in his presence, and I've just seen him bring these good things into my life. And the first one is there's security from the enemy in the presence of the Lord. There's security from the enemy in the presence of the Lord. In Psalm 27, 5, uh, part of verse 1 and 5, the Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? For he will conceal me there in the secret place, that's what we're talking about, when troubles come. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. And David is saying that when I'm with you, Lord, when I am aware of your presence, when your presence is revealed to me in an intense way, then all of a sudden, I quit worrying about the enemy. David was a guy who had physical enemies, He had like armies coming after his army and coming after him as the king. They would love to take him down. But you and I also have an enemy. Are you aware of that? So if you have put your faith in Jesus, that means you have left the kingdom of darkness and entered the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of heaven. And the devil wants you back. And so he is going to come at you in various ways. One way is with temptations. And he is trying to trip you up, trying to distract you, trying to get you out of the secret place where you're safe and secure with God and on your own, operating in your flesh. And the devil, when he comes at you in temptation, you know what the the best cure is? It is being in the secret place of God. It is being in his presence. I have tried everything. And I have tried all the self-help things. I've tried the prayers. I've tried everything. But the best solution to fight temptation is just simply being aware of God's presence. When he's with you, everything changes. You are safe. He conceals me there, David said, in the secret place. And that's what the secret place means. It's a hideout. It's a fortress. It's a place where the enemy can't get to you. It is amazing. Also, in hard times, the enemy also comes at you with difficult things. We've, we've had a, two different family members of our congregation recently who they've had a family member have to have an have amputations. I, I, I hardly ever hear about that. And we've heard of two Just in the past few months, this this is a hard time for those people, for the the people going through that procedure and for their family members. They're grieving. Their hearts are wrenched, and we've been praying for them so much that God would help them. But you know what is the, the one thing that is taking those people and those families through it? It's the presence of God. The presence of God. I remember the first one, uh, the, the gal that we were praying for, we've been praying on Wednesday nights and, and other times, when uh, she, she just, her first prayer was, help me to have the Lord with me so much that my attitude doesn't stink. Wow, what a great prayer. And, and it is the presence of the Lord, being in the presence of the Lord that protects you from the enemy. That is a reward that is in the secret place for you, security from the enemy. There's another one. There's unconditional love in the presence of the Lord. In Psalm 63, verses 3 to 4, David wrote, Your unfailing love, Lord, is better than life itself. You know what? That sounds poetic. It sounds like it should be in a song, and it is, the Psalms. But David is expressing what's on his heart. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. So in other words, if I had to choose, I would choose your love over my life. That's what he's saying. Your love is so 
fulfilling. And it's, it, I love that David often in the Psalms uses this phrase, your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. And I just want you to know God loves you so much. I hope you know that. God loves you so much. You don't have to perform. You don't have to behave. You, just you is enough for God to love you. Now, because he loves you, you want to perform. You want to obey him. You want to obey his commands. But I want you to know God loves you so much. You were included when God said, God so loved the world. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son to give his life for you so you could have eternal life. God loves you. And his love is unconditional. In another, in another Psalm, Psalm 23, David said that his goodness, God's goodness and unfailing love will pursue you. You might be running from God, but God is chasing after you, like in a good way. Like, I want to love you, accept you, forgive you, lead you, guide you, come here. I want to wrap my arms of protection and love around you. God loves you that much. And when you stop and enjoy his presence, you feel his love. That's what happens in the secret place. Uh, there was one time today, I don't know if you're reading through our, our um, I don't think I have it in my Bible, our, our, um, our pamphlet, our, our booklet, 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting, but every day there's a scripture and a prayer. And it's so good. Uh, one day, in our, we also have a Bible reading plan. They were going through a chapter a day. And we read Proverbs 1. And I was just so refreshed by it. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And I, I was just uh, asking the Lord for some specific wisdom in specific areas of my life. And Lord, uh, Proverbs 1 says that you give us wisdom. And that if we, we put you in right, if we're right relationship with you, we will have wisdom. And, uh, and I was thinking, Thinking back, all wisdom came from you. You're our creator. It all comes from you, Lord. I was just kind of meditating on that, praying about that. And I, I was like, Lord, I really am look, I'm looking for wisdom in these areas from you now and in this year to come. And then I, I kind of put that away and went, oh, I should look at the 21 days of devotional prayer. And it just happened to be on that day. Proverbs 2 was the verse. And it was, uh, it was something like God saying, I'm going to give you wisdom. And in that moment, it was just such a simple thing. But the, the order that I did those, uh, those things, uh, I could see immediately an encouragement from God. And I just went, you love me. That was so cool. Because usually I start the other way, uh, the other order. But on that day, he just ordered that little steps. So I would just see, oh, wow, you're, wow, you're here. That, uh, this is awesome. I love you too, Lord. There's another reward that David found in the secret place. There's satisfaction that is greater than food in the presence of the Lord. There's satisfaction that's greater than food in the presence of the Lord. In Psalm 63, 5 and 6, he wrote, You satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. I lie awake thinking of you, meditating on you through the night. For me, this, this year uh, in the fast, we've just completed a week, I did something just a little bit different and a little bit more intense. I felt led by the Lord to do that. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be a little less intense in these next two weeks. Still going to fast and pray till the end, but in, in just a little bit different way. But these, these, this past week, it was a challenge. And I, 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 several times, you know, like many times, I just feel so hungry or there were times I would have cravings. But uh, as I just uh, invested time to be with the Lord in the presence of the Lord, I began to just have a little different view of food. So rather than just thinking about when is my next meal going to be, you know, how many days or whatever, I, I just began to think and, and uh, reflect on how great it was that God spoke this through his word to me. How great it was that I felt this sense of his presence with me as I was just investing time with him. And how much I've enjoyed that. And I was able to, uh, uh, through the end of this intense week, I, I was able to not focus on my next meal 
but just to rejoice in the presence of the Lord. And I felt satisfied. I felt satisfied. Yes, food would be great right now, but you know what? I'm satisfied. And the thought went through me, I don't know if this is the Lord, maybe not. Man, I wonder if I could go longer next year. <laughs> could I go 21 days, juice only? Oh my goodness, that is that's such a scary thought to me. But the reason that thought came to me was because I felt satisfied. My body felt a little weak, honestly. But inside, I'm satisfied. I'm, I, I'm not looking for something else to fill this hunger. I, I'm, I'm good with God. He's satisfying. His, his presence is satisfying. I am beginning to find rest and peace in the shadow of of the Almighty. And that's one way I have felt this week. Wow. Normally this thing would upset me. That thing would frustrate me. And, and I just felt differently. I, I felt myself saying, well, Lord, I know you've got this. I'm, I'm, I know you're with me. I didn't, it doesn't mean everything went perfect or that I reacted to everything perfectly, but I could just feel a sense of peace and stability rising in me. I felt settled. I felt like several times I was hearing from God and I got out my journal and, and just journaled some things with God. I felt like he ordered my prayers. I always like to get a new journal. We have, we have new Hope and Life journals. And on that first page, I, I just put some things and I just said, Lord, help me to know really what to zero in on pr for prayer uh, this year. And I just felt like, yep, uh, that God ordered that and I've already seen one of the answers so glad. I'm so, so grateful. I feel like I've had a sense of focus and a change of perspective. Uh, I, I, I believe there's more change to come in me. I, I, don't, I don't think I'm quite in heaven yet. But I'm just saying, I do feel satisfied. I echo what David's saying. I feel satisfied. I, I would say that this was worth it, this time of prayer and fasting. And I hope for you, you find that too. Press in to God. Another reward David, David talks about, there's help in time of need. There's help in time of need in the presence of the Lord. Psalm 63, verses 7 to 8 says, Because you are my helper, I sing for joy in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your strong right hand holds me securely. David is saying, Lord, you're my helper. When I need help, you're the one. You're the one who has the help. You're the one who gives the help. You're the one who loves me enough to help me. I've taken that approach even with, with fasting so far. Lord, you've got to help me. This is hard. And he has helped me. And I, I believe that the Lord wants to be your helper too. He, I've seen him bring the right resources to me at just the right time this week. And I would say the bottom line in this message is your reward is waiting in God's secret place. Your reward is waiting in God's secret place. And he is your reward. Uh, most of these things I've been talking about today are changes in me that happen as I am in his presence. And David, the same thing. There's, a, there's a, a song by Hillsong called The Secret Place. A really long, very creative song about being in God's presence. But the one line that really gets me from that song is, it's not hiding, but it's hidden. The secret place is not hiding. God is not hiding from you. He does not want to make it hard for you to get to him. But it is hidden. It's not just yelling through the streets. Come and be with me. God is waiting patiently. He has called you. He's invited you. He's saying, I long for you to be with me. He's there waiting for you in the secret place. He's not hiding from you, but the secret place of God is sort of hidden. It takes some just slowing down a little bit, some intentionality to say, I want to be with you, Lord. And God's like, come on. I'm not, I'm not hiding but I am hidden. Not everybody is just walking around seeing God's presence. 
but he is there. So I want, I want to just ask you, not necessarily to say out loud, but just to evaluate what's your experience been so far during the fast. If, you, if you've been fasting and praying a little or a lot, I, I, just, I just encourage you to, to, to do one or the other. Fast a meal. If you've never fasted before, just get in there. Jump in. It's something we're all doing together as a church. What's it been like for you so far? Has it been good? If it's been going great, I say, keep it up. Don't give up now. Don't, don't go like, well, that was good. I, I don't need to fast anymore. Like, just keep it up. Let's press in. Let's just give God as much time as possible as we can in the new year. But if it's not going well, just, just some things to think about. Are you investing a chunk of time? Are you investing a chunk of time? I, I, I know that um, the simplest definition of fasting is giving up food for a spiritual purpose. So sometimes, like during the fast, people say, well, I'm giving up green beans for the fast, or I'm giving up broccoli for the fast. Okay, but I don't know if that's going to buy you any time with the Lord. You, you, part of the, the, what we're doing with the fast is we are actually capturing time that went to one of our first loves, food, and we're taking that time away and we're saying, God, I'm making you my first love, my first first love above all else, and I'm giving you that time. So if you have felt like, man, I've been a week into the prayer and fasting, I haven't even felt God, I haven't heard from him. First of all, are you investing a chunk of time? So in other words, uh, like if you give him a meal, will you give him an hour? That's a long time. If you're not used to praying and fasting for an hour, that can feel like a long time to you. Good. During that time, start with a worship song, just, just, just one, just to kind of help you focus. Read God's word. Read the prayer and fasting journal. There's a little topic, short topic for every day of the fast. Just, just get, your, get your mind focused. Get your mind heading towards God, and then take some time to listen. And I encourage you to have some blank paper in front of you, like the Hope and Life journal is great and a pen ready. I know for me, I like to write things in my phone so I have them forever, but I have found by the time I get my phone, unlock it, open the app, the, 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 the notes app or whatever, I've forgotten. And so for me, I like to start with paper and pen ready. Pen clicked, saying, God, I'm ready. I'm listening to you today. Sometimes, I hear nothing when I do that. Other times, I just hear uh, an immediate thing. That I, that's like, that's not the kind of thought that I, I, would, I would think. I, I asked the Lord one time this week, Jesus, what should we do together right now? And the first thought that came to my mind was stand up and dance. Okay, that was not from me. <laughs> In my office with a window on the door. And I did it. And I just said, Lord, I'm dancing to you in praise to you right now. I heard from him. And I believe that sometimes the Lord starts with little things like that that is not very meaningful, just to see, will you respond to that? Well, and I, so there was an element of faith. I had to go, this is not, oh, is this God? I'm going to, I asked you, Lord, this thought came to me. This does not conflict with your word. I'm doing it. And may the Lord do that in your life as well. Sometimes he speaks to you through a, a Bible verse. Well, then stop. Journal about it. Write it out in longhand. Write down some observations. Ask the Lord to ask you, what, what are you saying to me with this? Pray about it. That's a way for the Lord to speak to you. But that takes time. That takes time. There's other ideas in our booklet, our 21 Days booklet, for, to, to help you. But... My first question, if it's not going well, have you invested time, chunks of time for the Lord? Are you asking and listening, and are you seeking answers or seeking the Lord? Those are three just things for you to evaluate. If it's not going that great, if it's like I'm hungry and I don't feel God, then that, that's not great. That's not what we want. But there, there's some ideas, hopefully, to get you going. Good news is there's still plenty of time. Two more weeks. During this, this uh, concentrated season of, of prayer and fasting, 
and the Father's rewards are waiting for you in God's secret place, and he is the reward. So would you stand to your feet? I don't want to invite you to invest a few minutes in the secret place now. Before we go, before we run off, um, probably you're not all eating lunch anyway. So let's just take just a few minutes and, and let's just invest it in the presence of the Lord. Would you just bow your heads with me? Let's just pray. Lord, we come into your presence so grateful that you made a way. And Father, I praise you. We seek your face. I'm so thankful that when we seek you, we'll be found, you'll be found by us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We come into the secret place. And Lord, I thank you that you are the reward and that you have many rewards for us. There are many rewards that just come by us being in the secret place. We want to meet with you. And we're putting on some music and just setting a, uh, an atmosphere for, uh, for uh, prayer. And I'd like to try just something different today. In, in just a moment, I'm going to invite you to kneel, to kneel at your chair and just pray. Or there's a teeny bit of room up front uh, at the stage if you want to pray there. But most of us probably just kneel, kneel at your chair. If you're not physically, physically able, and I know some aren't, that is totally okay. I invite you just to sit and pray. That's fine. But do you need one of those rewards? Do you need security from the enemy right now because you're going through something? Temptation or hard times? Torment? Do you need to feel Jesus' unconditional love? Do you need to feel satisfied because you're craving all kinds of stuff that's not God? Or, or that you're just restless? Or do you need help? Do you need a helper? Do, do you just want to hear the Lord? You're like, you're just craving. I just want to actually hear the Lord. Then take a few moments to ask. And then take a moment to listen. But you're not going to hear anything if you're doing all the talking. So pray a little and listen a little. So I, I want to do this just a little bit differently than normal. So when you're done praying, feel free to leave. Okay, so we'll just kind of do a, a soft ending to the service. And in just a moment, I'm going to speak to you online in just a moment. But uh, when, when you leave, feel, feel free to drop your connect cards in the box in the back. Feel free um, uh, to be sure and come tonight to a very unique prayer gathering at 6. You're going to love it. It's, it's going to be very creative, very fun. But for now, I just want to invite you to pray. I invite you to kneel. I know not everybody can physically kneel. Then just sit if you can't, if you can't do it. But if you can kneel, go ahead now. Just kneel at your seat. And uh, let's just take these moments to be in the secret place. God bless you. I'm going to speak to you online. So online, I, I just want to give you a special invitation. Uh, before you go today. And I just want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus. If you have not done that, then you have not yet experienced the secret place of God. And I want to invite you there. How do you put your faith in Jesus? Well, you turn, your, you turn, your, um, you turn away from sin, from those things that separate you from God. You turn your life over to Jesus and you let him lead and I don't know if you've ever done that before, if you ever put your faith, faith in Jesus to become a Christian, but I just want to invite you to do that today. So I'd love to just lead you in a prayer to help you put your faith in Jesus. So would you just pray after me? Don't talk to me, though. Talk to Jesus right where you're at. Pray after me out loud. Let's go. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and let you lead. In Jesus' name, amen. And what I, I have invited you to is an apprenticeship with Jesus where you spend time with him, where you follow him, where you give your life to him.
And if you just prayed that prayer, you have begun that apprenticeship. And I just want to say we applaud you. I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy for you. It's the best decision you can make. And so we have given you an, a next step to, um, to uh, learn more about following Jesus. It's called the Following Jesus Online Course. And you can just scan the QR code that's on the screen to get there, or you can just go to our website, openlife.net, and click on Following Jesus. And we have provided this resource for you just to help you know the next steps. So I really want to encourage you to take those next steps, all right? And let's follow Jesus together. I'm so glad you have been with us today online. We're still praying in the room, uh, so I'm going to rejoin them now. God bless you. Go ahead and go ahead and keep praying right where you are for as long as you want. When you're ready to go, you can leave. You could stay for a half hour if you want. That's okay. But to the people in the room, I just want to give you an invitation to put your faith in Jesus. And if you've not done that, if you're not yet a Christian, I'd love to just come. I'll turn off my mic and just, just come in to, to you and pray for you. So if that's you today, would you just raise your hand and then uh, I'll just, I'm going to turn off my mic, come to you and pray for you. I want to make sure I give you that opportunity today before you go. Now, okay. Let's just keep praying for as long as you want. Let's just be with Jesus.